What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Superman's Comics, and we're here again to kick off that comic week with that top 10 back issue list for you to be on the lookout for, right, Jack? Oh, that's right. Now we've got 10 more issues hitting the list that are going to be books that we view as books with the potential to spike in the near or distant future. Again, these are not the hot books. These aren't the top books. These aren't the flash in the pan books that the other websites and apps are talking about. Instead, these are books that we have targeted as books we see a lot of potential in and ones that you should be paying attention to and adding to your buy list. Right, so we do this each and every week, giving you those top 10 picks. So if this is the first time on this channel watching this video, do us a favor, click that subscribe button, click that bell notification because we do a lot of comic and pop culture content right here on this channel. So make sure you guys get notified when those videos drop. But with that being said, let's get into the list, starting with number 10. Coming up on the bottom of the list at the 10 spot this week, we get that Civil War II, number three. Yeah, this is a, a big talked about issue um, because this is one that got popular post kind of rise of Immortal Hulk. This is the issue where Clint Barton uh, shoots and kills uh, the Hulk. And then, of course, we find out through the resurrection kind of a biblical story that um, Hulk is not someone who can die he is in fact immortal now naysayers will point to this issue and say well we really learned that hulk was always immortal and this is true but this is the issue in the event where that was written into existence where that was made to matter now yes this is a very um marvel promotion was heavy for this issue there was a midnight release um i think the midnight release polybagged book is probably the most desirable version of this book it's the one that the cover revealed that it was hulk who was going to die we knew there was a mysterious death in this issue um and and we knew there was going to be kind of a whodunit and in, in that cover we got to see um that it was hulk on the cover but at the same point that was a heavily printed cover so there's a lot of people that have been negative about this to me that's why this is a great long-term play uh, I think that in the history of comics, when you look at the resurgence Hulk has seen since the Immortal Hulk run, I think it's going to have a, a long-term effect on the character. And I think that the Immortal Hulk run is going to become iconic. And in turn, any book related to the Immortal Hulk run is going to be a book of demand. Yeah, so like we always talk about on this list, we like to cover these lists with trends within the list. And we're getting into that in number nine. So at number nine, we get Avengers number 682, that second print. All right, now there's a lot of debate if you were to call what's the first appearance of Immortal Hulk, what is that? Um, there's definitely a split camp between 684 and the 682, uh, specifically the 682 second print. And that's because at the, at the last page, splash page of 682, you get kind of the emergence of Hulk, um, it, very similar to the resurrection. Um, and this is a scene that plays out at the end of the book and it there is the title at the bottom that says immortal hulk doing what marvel began to do and kind of capitalizing on these moments with the second print for avengers 682 they switched the cover art to that last page splash page and kept that immortal hulk moniker right on the cover in my opinion 682 is the book to get because it has the moniker it's got the title if you want that second print so you get that cover appearance i certainly understand that that's kind of always how I've, I've felt about it. But if you're not familiar with the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel, both Brian and I subscribe to kind of the theory that a first appearance is a first appearance. So since Immortal Hulk shows up and they state that he's immortal in that issue, that's kind of the way we look at it. But we also know that the market deems 684 that first full appearance. So that's always something that you want to note. Either way, with the current explosion of late printings and late printing variants, um, this 682 second print seems to be one that's missed this explosion and one to really be paying attention to because unlike a lot of the books that have kind of gone up in value due to just perceived scarcity, this book actually has some events tying it to uh, any sort of reason why any price spikes would be legitimate. Yes, I do subscribe to first appearances, first appearance. I also like 684 because that you get that cover appearance that people always sought after. So. I think this is also a difference between first appearance. For me, the way I view it, it's a difference between first appearance and market collectability, where that people go after that 684. But I, just like you agree, 682 to me is the first appearance. But like we say, Pokemon them and just buy them all. Right. 
So at number seven, we get another kind of tie into that. We're talking about that whole Avengers No Surrender storyline, right? Right. So there were so many new characters that were introduced in that storyline. And honestly, I could sit here and list three or four different issues and we could just talk about those. But this entire storyline is one to really pay attention to because within No Surrender, you got characters like Voyager, uh, characters like Challenger, but uh, all of those characters debuted within this this kind of run. So issues like 675 and you know the 675 second print, uh, 676, uh, 679, 677. These are all in demand issues, specifically those later printings, which feature a lot of the first appearances, like 679 featuring first appearance of Challenger, features them on the cover of the second print. Uh, they, these are all characters that have been like used in mobile gaming, that have been used in other storylines. Clearly, Marvel has pulled from their speculation um, to possibly Voyager could have already appeared in the MCU through Ant-Man. Uh, there's a lot of talk about these characters already, and they're still relatively inexpensive when you compare to the grand scheme of things. Um, what a lot of these kind of newer modern characters are going for last week we certainly talked on three up three down um the fact that modern characters just keep kind of growing in value uh a lot of these like recent first appearances and here are some that commanded the market attention just two years ago three years ago and have now kind of fallen on forgotten times now is the time to buy these books up we got fantastic four number 53 this is a book um that you're it just upon seeing you would think is extremely expensive, but I would urge you to check the current eBay selling uh, prices of this book. This is astonishing to see how affordable this book currently is versus its importance overall within the kind of mythos of Black Panther. Now we know who Black Panther is and we know his value in the market. Uh, I think it, you have to have gotten into collecting in the last year to not realize that when the Black Panther movie came out, that that was an, a phenomenon. We were we were selling so many books. There were so many books popping off of interest. There were um, an absolute fervor surrounding the character. And every major issue and import, issue of importance surrounding Black Panther spiked in value. But if you go look at this issue now, you're looking at uh, the your second appearance, your origin of Black Panther. Um, this is certainly a, a book that should be in serious demand yet you can find raw copies in that mid to low mid grade anywhere from 20 to 40 dollars um that's incredible to me brian that that peep that this book can be had that low in any grade even if we're talking you know 3-0 right raw it's still it's still shocking to me that you could buy that book for 20 dollars because this should certainly be a multiple hundred dollar book especially when you look at what the price of the first appearance goes for so I think for $75, $80, you can get yourself a really nice copy of this. Um, and I think that this is a book that certainly when Black Panther 2 rolls around and, and and especially once the Fantastic Four is introduced into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I think that this this is a book that's a blue chipper. It's going to be a, as high as the first appearance goes. This one can kind of like a coattail with it. Avengers number 87. Right. So here it, you have kind of... Uh, a, a very similar uh, similar concept where you, you have a book that has certainly been in demand, certainly been a, a, a book uh, that people have wanted and paid attention to that's just kind of gone through a down cycle, gone through a period where people aren't paying as much attention to it. And one that is kind of fits that mold of classic is classic, um, kind of fits that mold of a book that's always going to be in demand and one that is ready to buy at kind of the current market while people are chasing kind of those shiny new announcements. But yeah, so like when the first Black Panther movie came out, this was one of those ones that was sought after. I think we're just in the low of the Black Panther movie. news. still a classic issue. Classic is classic, like we always say. But as soon as we start hearing more movie news, this is going to move right back into that express lane and, and rise in value again. So it's a good time to pick it up. Then coming in at number four, everyone knows how much people like Donny Cates, but they always go after those key issues. And at number four, we got a reason to pick up some of those filler issues, right? 
Well, just looking at what the prices of those key issues and some of those kind of less than keys, more like the the scarcity, um, the way that the prices have have dramatically risen, it really brings credence to the fact that people are putting these runs together. Um, you, you want to look at evidence, look at an issue like um, Venom number four, which is not necessarily a first appearance. It comes, you know, it's right after the first appearance of Null. This was a cover price book for a very long time that is now a $50 book. And so I look at issues, especially in the teens, that are have been maybe a little overprinted. Uh, maybe people were speculating on things happening with Dylan that didn't work out. Their dollar bin books, their cover price or below. Stores are selling them for half cover. I think that books like filler books from whether it's Silver Surfer Black or Venom or Thor are books that people need to be picking up um, because I think that there is going to be no filler with this run. And for a long time, these are going to be in-demand books. And I think you'll be able to make profit on the on the filler issues as they kind of grow in value with the keys. But I also think their filler books are going to be the key to putting together runs with the keys. So if you have the keys, being able to add some of these fillers and selling sets and selling lots is going to differentiate you um, and add some ROI. Coming in at number three, we get the Dark Knight's Metal One-Shots. These came out, they saw a rise in value. They've also settled back down, which is a great time to pick these up again, right? Right, because we're on the second volume, and we've seen increased heat again with Robin King and some of the new stuff that's been done. And it really, to me, only brings credence to the fact that we've got some Elseworld stuff, whether it's Deceased or it's Dark Knight's Death Metal that I think has been extremely popular with the DC kind of buying crowd and dc has a lot of avenues to release whether it's a television show on hbo max uh, animated feature um which certainly their animated features have been amazing and have caused spikes in the secondary market um as well as with the joker movie showing that they can create a movie outside of dc continuity um and still have the full support of the market so i look at dark knight's and the characters surrounding and I think that at some point there has to be some media adaptation that it's been such an important part of the publishing initiative for the last couple of years um and you know, there were a lot of first appearances like you mentioned that were introduced in those one shots a lot of those um kind of versions the Dark Knights versions of the Justice League uh and they were very important there were Funko Pops action figures you know there was a lot of support around those characters but coming into the second volume as those characters are not the focal point of the second volume they have not been the focal point of the secondary market a lot of those prices have depressed and i think if you're bullish on the property in general it's good to go back and grab those original characters i think you can that could be said for a lot of dc 50, new 52 as well coming in at number two we got a great one and hell affordable right and we're talking about hardware number one right now the big announcement at uh, DC Fandom for the so there was a surprise panel and everybody was speculating this is going to be the next big movie. Uh, what is going to be the the big announcement? Is there going to be a huge crossover from DC? And what they announced is the relaunch of Milestone Comics. Now they've been they're trying to relaunch Milestone Comics for a number of years. It's difficult. The original founder uh, JD McDuffie has passed away, so you know you're really trying to do something in the memory. You don't have the initial driving force. Um, but with all that's going on with social injustice and um, the way that kind of the movement in our country is, Milestone Comics was the first uh, Black-owned comic imprint uh, and to be supported by DC Comics and a division of DC Comics. It brought a lot of, of characters of color into the DC Universe, which was sorely lacking uh, of characters of color. Um, and not in the way that a lot of like the negative people would say, oh, this is forced diversity or, or whatever. It, it was very organic and um, very reminiscent of some of the very cool things that were done in the 90s. Um, and a lot of these characters, it, there's really no reason why, Brian, they don't have a place in today's comic book market other than it, Milestone as a company. The, the issues were really corporate and, and divisions within um founding members i really encourage you there's some great documentaries on milestone comics if you're not familiar with milestone comics it's a great time to do your research and to learn up but um every, all the attention post announcement has gone on static shock rightfully so static shock was the most marketable character milestone had um but at the same point uh 
it was not the only big character milestone had. And we've seen some starting to see some slight spikes with two other characters. And I would not chase it the the book we're gonna talk about in the two slot and the book we're gonna talk about in the one slot on eBay prices right now because they're starting to escalate. Instead, I would tell you these are in dollar bins everywhere. Um, hardware was kind of a cable meets um Deathlock kind of character, uh, which was all the rage back in the 90s. Uh, very cool and had one of the longest running series under Milestone Comics over 50 issues. His first appearance was Hardware number one. Um, like the Static Shock issues, I would pay attention to that polybagged version. Um, and uh, that's the one that I, I would say I've seen hundreds of copies over the years in dollar bins. And our number one spot tonight carries right into that number two spot with Milestone. We're talking about Icon number one. Yeah, and this is one where Icon was really the flagship character of Milestone. He was essentially Black Superman. Um, had a little bit of Superman, a little bit of Green Lantern kind of combined into one. Um, and very, very cool character. Uh, one who I think uh, was ahead of his time. You're talking about an African-American character, a Superman character who had like Republican political beliefs and how that constantly butted up against um, kind of the social uh, demands of the people that he was trying to help and support. And that caused um, constant issues and tensions and things like that so like very cool and nuanced character that again ahead of his time when you look at some of the issues we're going on with in our country right now um i think that this character is a character who could really break out and another thing that really indicated to me brian that dc has some plans for this character was at dc fandom they had some exclusive t-shirts and one of the t-shirts they had was uh a t-shirt depicting their um prominent African-American characters taking a knee or throwing up a fist um, in support of some of the uh, social justice causes going around the country right now. One of the characters who was like front and center was Icon. I mean, I mean, front and center kind of positioned larger than say Black Lightning or some of the more predominant um, African-American DC Comics characters. So that to me showed that DC, how DC views Icon, the place that they, they hold him in. Um, this is one I would be on the lookout for. Uh, copies, like I said, are selling on eBay for around $15. I would not pay that. These are in dollar bins everywhere. Do your hunting, um, but do it safe. Wear your mask uh, in public and, and, and try to avoid uh, breaking social distancing policies because um, we're trying to get back out there and get the, the, the comic game back rolling as best we can. So there it is, guys. There's the top 10 back issues to be on the lookout for this week. Now, we gave you some top t we gave you some back issues, but we also want to tell you about some great current issues, especially when it comes to Simple Man's Comics. We have some brand new exclusive variants that just went up for sale, right? We have that Draken New Dawn number two, as well as a G.I. Joe book, right? That's right. We've got a, a double shot and really a triple shot from the amazing artist Hal Laren as we've got Draken New Dawn number two, depicting Ranger Slayer in her brand new Draken armor. Um, the first exclusive variant featuring her on the cover in that role, uh, done by the amazing Hal Larian. It's incredible 500 print run. And we've also got G.I. Joe 275, uh, the conclusion of the 10 month long snake hunt storyline, um, big monumental issue, uh, two cover set Hal Larian. Uh, amazing Snake Eyes Cobra cover limited to 1,000 as well as an uh, awesome kind of limited white version uh, limited to just 500 copies and those will be available at simplemanscomics.com as well as the 616comics.com With that being said guys, this is Brian Jack with Simplemans Comics I'll see you guys in the next video Most stuck on the six feet inside the bubble never travel out to a new scene so that brings them up and loose jeans and so now we got you stuck inside of the crossroad i actually respect that you and never want more things just two things always tie your shoes when they're loosening never go outside and catch a drip because one breeze can make it grow always inside of this loophole i'm here